Hello children. So today we are going to start with a new chapter, Properties of Triangles. So let us start. Now what is a triangle? You have already learnt in your previous classes. A triangle is a closed figure made up of three line segments. So you know this is a triangle. But today we are going to learn new words. See in a triangle, now this is a triangle XYZ. Okay. In a triangle you will have three vertices, three sides and three angles. Now what are vertices? When two lines come and join in a particular point, they form a vertex. Now if you see XY is a line segment and YZ is a line segment, they both come and meet at point Y. So Y is a vertex. In the same way, XZ and YZ come and meet at Z. So this is one vertex and the side XY and ZX come and meet at X. So we can say X, Y and Z are the three vertices. In the same way, what are the three sides children? X, Y, this is first side. Y, Z, this is second side. And X, Z, this is the third side. They are the three sides. In the same way, there will be three angles formed. When X, Y and Y, Z meet, there is an angle formed inside. So this is your first angle. When Y, Z and X, Z meet, here there will be a second angle formed. Angle Y, angle Z and when Y, X and Z, X meet, here there will be a third angle formed. So, and angle X are the three angles. So, hope you understood children. How in a triangle you have three vertices, three sides and three angles. Now, let us go to the next topic. That is interior and exterior of a triangle. Now, you can see there is a triangle A, B, C. So, this is a triangle a, B, C with A, B, C as vertices. Now I have placed some points inside the triangle. Some points are there on the triangle and some points are lying on the exterior of the triangle. So let us understand what are the terms in max boundary of a triangle. So what is boundary of a triangle? It refers to all points lying on the sides of a triangle. You know in a triangle there are three sides. So whatever points are lying on the side that is called boundary of a triangle. Let us identify them. Now here if you see children AB is one side and point X is lying on that side. So that is boundary. Then BC is a second side and Y is lying on that side. It is sitting on that line. So that is one boundary and the third side AC point Z is sitting on that side. So this is also a boundary. So X, Y, Z are all the points lying on the side of a triangle. Now what is interior of a triangle? This is yet another word. You will learn points that lie inside the boundary of a triangle. You know now this is your boundary, right children? Now whatever points are inside the triangle, what are the points inside the triangle? Point P and point Q. So they are interior points of a triangle. Now this boundary and this interior angle together make the triangular region. So if, you, if they ask you what is a triangular region? The boundary of a triangle and interior of a triangle together make a triangular region. So this along with the points inside make up the triangular region. Now what is left children? K, L and M. They are outside the triangle. So they are called as exterior of a triangle. Points that lie outside the boundary of a triangle. What are they? Point K, point L and point M. Hope you understood clearly. Now we will learn what are medians and altitudes. 
So children, our next topic is medians of a triangle. Now what is median of a triangle? A median is a line segment that joins a vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the side opposite to it. That means it is a line which joins the vertex and midpoint of the side opposite to it. For example, now here I have drawn a triangle LMN. Now this is the vertex we know in a triangle there are three vertex L, M and N are vertex. Now if I draw a line segment from the midpoint, okay, joins a vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the side opposite to it. So what is the side opposite to L children? It is MN. So if I put a midpoint here, let us take, a, uh, take it as O. Now if I join this line segment from the vertex to the midpoint of the side opposite to it, then LO is called the median. LO is median and O becomes the midpoint. O is the midpoint. So if the side MN is of 10 cm children, what happens? MO is 5 cm and NO becomes 5 cm because O is in the middle. That means it is cutting this line into two equal half. MO becomes equal to NO. In the same way, in a median, now this is a triangle, it is a three-sided figure. So there will be three medians. This is the first median. Now, next is, let us draw a line segment joining the vertex M to the opposite side of the midpoint. Now here, this is the opposite side. Let this be the midpoint P. Now if I join this line segment, MP, this is our second median. So MP is our median and P is the midpoint. In the same way children, if I draw a line segment joining the vertex N to the midpoint of the side opposite to it. Now what is the opposite here? This one. So let us name it as Q. And if I draw this, this is our third median. So I can say NQ is the median and Q is the midpoint. So there are three medians and O, P, Q are the midpoints. Now let us go to the next topic. Altitudes of a triangle. Now what is the difference between median and altitude? This is also a line segment and altitude is a line segment that joins the vertex of a triangle to a point on the opposite side. That means it is not the midpoint. Here when I was drawing it, this P becomes the midpoint and this and this are equal in measure. But here, if I join this line segment, now let me take any point P, okay? This is the vertex. Now if I draw a straight line, it is not necessary children that S will be the midpoint. It is just a line segment but it is right angle to the side. That means it forms 90 degree here. So that is the difference between median and altitude. So I can say PS is perpendicular to QR. That means they form 90 degree. So whenever you have given some figure like two triangles are there and they will ask you tell us children which is the median and which is the altitude. So the line segment which is joining the vertex and it shows the midpoint. What does it mean children here two lines and here two lines. That means this measurement is equal to this measurement. That means this is the midpoint. Okay. Suppose this is an ABC triangle and D is the midpoint. That is why D is cutting it into two equal half. So this is a diagram of median. Whereas suppose this is also ABC and this is D. Here there is no show, sign showing that these two are cutting into two equal half. But they are showing that this is a 90 degree. So it is perpendicular. That means this is a diagram of altitude. Now you understood how to find out the difference between median and altitude. Because you have three medians. At the same way you have three altitudes. Now from this vertex if I draw a line segment. Uh, joining the opposite side and it is right angle to it. So
So now QT is an altitude. So I will write, I can say QT is perpendicular to PR. Why? Because it forms a 90 degree. In the same way, if I join a line R uh, U and it forms a 90 degree. So I can say R U is perpendicular to which side children? PC. So you see there are three medians which cut it into two equal half and there are three altitude which make perpendicular to the opposite side. Now let us learn angle sum property. Now children we will learn how is angles of a triangle equal to 180. That means whenever we add the sum of the angles of a triangle we say it is 180. But how do we arrive at that decision? Yes, it is 180. So we can say it is the proof of angle sum property. What does the angle sum property say? Angle sum property states that the sum of measures of interior angle of a triangle is 180. That means whatever angles are inside the triangle. In, in a triangle there are three angles. So if you see at the main triangle ABC, Angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 is 180 is the statement according to angle sub property. But how did we arrive at this conclusion? That is the proof. Now we know children that if I draw a straight line and if I mark a V on that, okay, what is the sum of these three angles? Let me name it as A, B, C, okay. We know that angles in a straight line is equal to 180 degree. That means A plus B plus C, they make 180 degree. If you want, you can use a protractor and see children. You can draw a line like this and keep a protractor here. And you see they will form, this is 0 degree, this is 180 degree. You can see they form a 180 degree because angles in a straight line always form 180 degree. Now here, what is the straight line? The straight line is DAE. So what can we say about 4 plus 1 plus 5? Yes, that is also equal to 180. Why? Because 4 plus 1 plus 5 is equal to 180 as they are angles in a straight line. Now, if I draw, now let us take DE is parallel to BC. Okay, so this line DE is parallel to BC. And if I take AB as the transversal, Okay, what have we learned children? If there are two parallel lines and there is a transversal, then top end and this, they make alternate interior angles. One is on the top, top of left hand side and this is at the bottom on right hand side. So they always form an alternate interior angles and alternate interior angles are equal. So here if you see angle 4 and angle 2 are alternate interior angles. So we can say when DE is parallel to BC and AB is the transversal, angle 4 is equal to angle 2 alternate interior angles. In the same way, when I take DE is parallel to BC and I take AC as the transversal, so what can I say about 5 and 3? They also form, now this is forming like this, right? Right hand side, top. And left hand side bottom. So they also form alternate interior angles. So angle 5 is equal to angle 3. That is also alternate interior angles. So this is our second and third equation. Now if I substitute instead of angle 4. If I write angle 2 here. So what it will become. Because both are equal. No? If this is 60 degree. This is also 60 degree. So instead of angle 4. I am substituting here with angle 2. In the same way. Instead of angle 5, I will substitute it with angle 3. So what does we get? What do we get? Angle 2 plus angle 1 plus angle 3 equal to 180. That is what I have written here. This is by substituting. Okay. So by substituting, angle 2 plus angle 1 plus angle 3 is equal to 180. And what is this 1, 2, 3? They are nothing but angle A angle B and angle C. 
So instead of them, I have written their names. Angle 1 is angle A, angle 2 is angle B and angle C is angle 3. So A plus B plus C is 180 and thus he arrived at the proof statement that is sum of 3 angles of a triangle is 180. Hope you understood children. If you like the video, share it with your friends. Bye.